The Senate faces a partisan meltdown as Majority Leader Harry Reid sticks with his threat to strip Republicans of their power to filibuster unless they allow up or down votes on seven presidential nominees. Here's Majority Leader just yesterday speaking to the Center for American Progress. We need to move forward. We need to stop blocking this president and the future presidents from having a qualified team that he thinks is what he needs. We will have that and more right here, right now on the News Hub. Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Simon Constable. Joining us now is Wall Street Journal Washington Bureau Chief Jerry Seib, who just returned from Capitol Hill. He's joined by Richard Arenberg, Brown University adjunct lecturer and former deputy, deputy chief of staff to U.S. Senator Carl Levin. Uh, Jerry, let's start with you. Uh, let's talk about what Reid is proposing. Well, what he wants to do is essentially stop the ability of the minority in the Senate, in this case the Republicans, to use the filibuster to block executive branch appointees, not judges and not legislation. He's very careful to draw a distinction there. But he's saying essentially a president can't be expected to operate unless he can appoint his own people and put a team in place. There have been a lot of delays uh, and some obstruction. He's particularly focusing on seven people now, including uh, National Labor Relations Board uh, nominees. Uh, Richard Cordray, who's been chosen to head the Consumer Financial Protection Board, a new agency, and the Labor Secretary, and saying these are the kinds of things that a president needs to have to put his policies in place. We should stop this. I'm going to change the rules. I'm going to propose to change the rules so that those kinds of appointees can be, uh, 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 can be approved with a simple majority vote, not a 60-vote anti-filibuster vote. Okay. Now, this doesn't sound like a big deal maybe to, to most people, but inside the Senate, it's an earthquake. Yeah, it, it, it does sound a little bit like an earthquake. Jerry, stay, stay with us. Uh, Richard Arenberg, uh, Arenberg of, uh, of Brown, how big a deal is it? I mean, you know, this, this is a long-standing tradition as far as I know. This is a very big deal. Uh, the, uh, what's come to be known as the nuclear option, which is the methodology that uh, the majority leader is proposing to use, normally it takes 67 votes uh, to end debate on a rules change, he's proposing to do it by a simple majority. So how, how can, uh, Mr. Arenberg, how can that possibly happen if you need 67 votes to change a, a rule and the filibuster is part of the rules, then how can he do this with a simple majority of 51? Ex explain well, it to us. It's a, it's a tricky kind of uh, procedural sleight of hand. It requires the presiding officer, who may be the vice president, of course. Uh, if it's not, it'll be a member of the majority party. Uh, would uh, Majority Leader Reid would make a point of order. The, uh, the uh, presiding officer would uphold that point of order. Uh, uh, minority Leader McConnell will appeal that ruling and then uh, 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 Senator Reid would move to table that appeal, and if he has 51 votes, he can table it. It's a, it's a non-debatable motion. He can table it by a simple majority, and then the new precedent is established. Okay. St stay with us, Mr. Arenberg. Get Jerry, back to you. You've just got back from Capitol Hill. What's the mood like there about this proposal? Well, there, there's not a lot happening uh, up there right now. I mean, the, the Republicans are talking about maybe suggesting that the Democrats in the White House simply appoint a couple of different people for the NLRB and then they'd vote for those uh, people because one of their objections is that the, those nominees were chosen during uh, uh, what they believe was a congressional recess. And so that's a fairly modest compromise. It seems to be the only one that's in the air. Uh, there's going to be a big meeting tonight. Uh, both sides or either side could blink at that meeting. But right now, uh, you look for, in vain for uh, signs of serious compromise. Senator John McCain, a Republican, obviously, is going uh, around trying to talk to people to see if there's something that can be done. Uh, but you don't get a sense of a whole lot of traction. You know, if there's to be a compromise, it, these things don't happen until the 11th hour anyway. So we'll have to wait until tonight to see. Yeah, there is, there is that chicken element to this. Mr. Mr. Arenberg, is the medicine right here for the problem? I mean, you know, the, the Senate has operated with a filibuster for many, many years. Why, why, why can't, you know, be more collegial and just get on and get the job done rather than changing everything? Well, I think that's right. I mean, I think what we're... What we really have here is a case of bad behavior. I mean, I'm sympathetic with what 
Majority Leader Reid is saying, I do believe that a president's entitled to uh, the, the, his nominees in his administration. The problem here is if you use this nuclear option, if you once establish the president that a simple majority, essentially by fiat, can change the rules, uh, there's no way that will be held to just uh, executive nominations for very long. Uh, as soon as we have a, 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 a blockage on uh, judicial nominations, then th those would be added, and and it's a slippery slope. And soon the uh, the filibuster on legislative uh, uh, on legislative matters would be gone also, and 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 with it the character of the Senate. It would become another majoritarian body mm. like the House. Okay. Slippery slope. There you have it, Richard Arenberg of Brown University and Jerry Seib, our bureau chief at Washington, D.C. Thank you both very much.